It is so simple to do. Hattie Duncan is busy using her creative vision. She sees most anything, from obscure household items to yard sale bargains to trash can trinkets, as a medium for her art. Take the whole pantyhole here and cut the top out, down to the crouch and the legs. That's right. Hattie said pantyhose. Just one of the unusual elements in the grab bag of this West Tennessee folk artist. I'm going to pull this down as tight as I can get it. You know, it's, it's, just, it's a part of the art that I do, that you can be free-spirited in. You know, it's like you can let go in there. You can just be, be free. Bent wire hangers, stretched pantyhose, paint and glue form the abstract angle of Hattie's art, work open to interpretation. When you start working on it, you know, it, it develops. It becomes something. What the sculpture becomes is part of the fun. The joy for me comes from knowing what it looks like when it's completed. And I love butterflies anyway. And so it reminds me of the butterfly, the abstract wings. But an artist's passion has its price. Living space gives way to creative space and a show place for Hattie's abstract work, as well as her paper mache figures, a purple elephant, a kaleidoscopic peacock, and people. Not just any people, but sculptures of those who have meant something in Hattie's life. You know, like when a person pass on and you keep them alive in your mind. Well, I put mine in my art. You know, I keep the, keep the, the memory of them alive, even if they're not deceased. It's just, a, it's a pleasure. I can go to a happy place there. There's no doubt that Hattie's sentimental sculptures take her to a happier place than her early childhood when a dreaded crippling disease seemed to end any possibility of her becoming an artist. At the age of three, I was diagnosed with polio. I didn't go to a doctor. So uh, the members of the church would fast and pray. And well, before I started school at six, I was walking. Not only walking, but drawing. I knew I had the ability to create things. My dad would haul things from other people's house, like lumber and stuff. And I would find pieces of smooth wood and I would use crayon to do it, you know, draw horses. I love drawing horses. From flat drawings to shapes, shapes with depth and personality, fresh art recycled from yesterday's news. This is a uh, shredded newspaper that's been put in a blender. This homemade paper mache paste gives her the skin she needs to cover those odds and ends that make up the bodies of her characters. Some of them are wire, and some are cardboard, your paper towel holders. You know, I'll start off with that. This right here, oh, uh, this is a candlestick. I'm putting on a candlestick, and this is a dishwashing liquid bottle in here. And it takes me a while because I wasn't good in biology. So the bones in the face, I just remember from memory. And it's so simple. It's just like putting frosting on a cake. When you see Hattie's work, you definitely do not think about the European masters. Um, but that's what makes it so special. It's her own way of viewing and how she creates these personable sculptures. This one is Liz, cousin of mine. No matter where she goes, she wants to always look different from everybody at the party. If she's at a funeral, she might have on purple. When Hattie sculpts someone, it isn't so much about physical resemblance as it is including touches that tell you something about that person in a good-natured way. This one uh, is my cousin Alma. Even as a child, she thought she was the prettiest in the family. She was always the one that uh, was a singer at the group. Tommy Lee is my, one, of, one of my oldest cousins on my daddy's side. And uh, he, he's 80-something years old. But when he dress, he looks as though he's 16. He acts like he's 16. My dad's sister, Dora, and the teeth was fitting for her because she talked so much. My dad, baby sister. I've heard it said that she was too pretty for one man. This is Pee Wee. Very mild-mannered. He cut yard for different people for a living. 
and uh, his teeth. I ain't never seen anything like this before. His teeth came, his lip was up and his teeth came straight out. And there's Pee Wee, teeth and all, standing with Hattie's other works at an art gallery in an unlikely place, a bank. I think it's so important for businesses, individuals to support the talent in their own community. And this artwork to me is just phenomenal. I love folk art, but I've never seen anything to equal Hattie's work that, that you see. Each piece has its unique look and personality, but there is one sculpture that is closest to Hattie's heart. And this one is uh, Keisha, my daughter. To me, she's an angel. Well, when I, when I first saw it, I, you know, I was like, okay, so what is it? And she's like, it's an angel. And I'm like, and that's me. And she said, yeah. She's not an angel every day, but she is an angel at heart. Like, you know, my mom thinks I'm an angel, so I need to have that portrayal to other people as well. When I do my pieces, you know, I do it with love, and I pray a lot when I'm working. I ask God that when this art touch a person, that they're blessed. And it was at an artisan market years ago that Hattie feels her prayer was answered. There was a man came up to the table. He was just smiling, and, uh, he, he got ready to walk away. And I said, sir, I said, I really appreciate you stopping by. He said, no, thank you. He said, my wife passed two weeks ago. And your art makes me smile. It was like, I don't even care if I don't sell anything. I'm just, I'm just so happy, you know. For Hattie, the real payoff is emotional, not economic. She believes worrying about money should not stop an artist from the joy of creating. I have learned that when you put a money value on things, you can't, you, you won't be able to do it anyway. Uh, this is made out of pine combs, and this is a meat tray here. I took the, a meat tray, I washed it with Clorox and dry them and make the circle in it and attach it here. So Hattie feels free to use wire hangers, old newspapers, junk, and trash to create her art in much the same way that a crippled child became an artist. I had polio in my leg, not in my head. My mind is not afflicted.